Hi, and thanks so much for joining us today. I am here with Adrienne Mascao, and she's a professional organizer. And we're here today to talk about some really tough topics. If you are trapped with some stuff that maybe you want to get rid of, but you don't know how, and you don't know how to work through the emotions of why you still have it, if you've been struggling with stuff that you've inherited from mom or dad or grandma, or maybe it's your child that's moved away from home, or maybe even a child that's passed on. How do we deal with those things that are tied up in our homes and they become a part of our lives because they're part of our emotions? So let's take a different look, maybe from a side or maybe a perspective that we haven't seen before that might shed some new insights into our progress. So please help me welcome Adrian Mosqueo. How are you today? Thank you so much, Angela. I'm great. And I know that in setting goals, let's say, for example, having dinner with your family, there are a lot of people that are working through issues right now that are even tripping up that process. And it might be working through things like grief. I know that my husband just lost his dad a couple of weeks ago. And when so I speak to his mother, thank you. When I speak to his mother, I ask her, how are you doing? And she says, it seems really surreal, like it hasn't set in yet. And she said, so I'm trying to get as much stuff down as I can right now while I'm in this frame of mind. Because she said, yeah. when it hits me, I'm afraid I'm going to become paralyzed. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people, I know there are a lot of people that have joined us here before that have questions about they have lost a loved one, a parent or a spouse or a child, and the years have passed. And after that surreal moment passes and you're like, okay, I've been hurrying and trying to get the funeral ready and serve the family and get the family out of town and all these things, just in order to catch your breath. When you catch your breath, you don't come back up for air. And many people are like, what now? Now that I've had a chance to, to be alone with my grief, what now? And a lot of people don't know what the next steps are. Yeah. And with grief to me is the waves of there is no path. This is the way that you need to go and it will get you to a better state. There's no path. And I think what I've seen the most and working with people very soon around a loss is there's such a fragility there and to take the utmost care of what that individual is going through is essential. And what happens after loss, and this was my experience, I'll share this because I think it's a really good shares, tells you why I started my business. But I asked my stepfather, my mom had just died. How can I help her? Is there something I can do? Again, I'm asking this the day after my mom died, which is a huge part of who I am. But I just felt that feeling, like you said, of your mother-in-law. Of, I got to do it now because I don't know how I'm going to feel even in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I would um, go into her bathroom and clean out her vanity. And I was living in Portland, Oregon at the time. So this is not a home that I was in often. So to walk into her bathroom and to think about where she stood and getting ready in the morning and all that she would do, what those drawers would hold and the weight of each drawer that I opened, it's nothing like you ever can prepare yourself for. You can't, you, you just can't prepare yourself. And so I remember walking in the bathroom, agreeing to this and just needing to take a moment. And they had built the entire house around her clawfoot tub. She was like the most planner of all things, but she loved her baths and she literally planned where her tub would be to look out at the view here in Tennessee. And I just closed the door and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And so I just took the time. And I think that is what I would encourage people is even with timelines of having to get everything out of the house or family members pressuring you to get it done or money is always just a huge stressor around anyone passing and not wanting to lose and really honoring that individual. But to take a moment to breathe and really make sure that you're taking care of yourself in that loss. And so I did. The tub was not filled, but I just curled up in that tub and I looked out of that view and I just had this moment of being able to honor my mom and then step into helping my stepfather with the containerizing of what was in those drawers. And so Whoever's listening, if you have lost someone or are going through that, 
you have support. And that's a huge part of what Blythe offers is being able to very much relate personally, but also the team, this team that I've built is able to come in and really listen to what you need and guide. And I, I believe that's one of the hardest parts of this is people literally are in shock. They have had someone in their life and then it's the absence of that person. And so the void that's there is really real and trying to look in a room and find paperwork to someone that you just lost is one of the most daunting things. So we've had one client that just told us all the paperwork that they needed us to find in their father's office. And we were able to go in and find all of those versus them having to go sort through all this paperwork while grieving. So Mm -hmm. those are just some, a couple of helpful steps that just to encourage people in that season of not knowing what to do. And it's okay that you don't know what to do, but you have support. So I want to thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much. It's been an honor. This was so good. Tell our listeners where they can go to find you. So you can find me on Instagram at whyhello.blythe. So B-L-Y-T-H-E. It's www.blythe.fun because we are having fun while organizing. Yeah, 